Okay, if you're like me looking to get a broader integration of devices that Apple doesn't support officially, connect with more brands that even Apple will never support, and also play nice with Google and Alexa. Then say hello to Homebridge, your HomeKit support for the impatient. In this video, I'll give you five reasons and with just seven clicks to get you started with Homebridge. Hello and welcome to my channel and if you're into smart home DIY and love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then there are tons of tutorial videos that you can use. So pretty please do take a look and don't be shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now as an active smart home DIYer and with Apple being my primary smart home ecosystem, my first problem was finding affordable out of the box HomeKit certified products. Well, they don't come cheap and depending on where you stay, you may never find any. That's why. Homebridge came to my rescue. It solved that problem and it also allowed me to choose from a portfolio of devices to add to my current and also to my new smart and sustainable home that I'll be starting to build shortly. I'll also be documenting the entire build from the ground up. Plus, Homebridge has a large community online that you can join and get support from. Anyways, this entire video has got timestamps in the description. Feel free to move about and also stick till the end to find out with matter around the corner what it means for Homebridge. So let's get started and the question is, what is Homebridge? It is a lightweight software that runs on Node.js. It also brings HomeKit support where there is none through integrations called plugins. With these plugins, you can connect with a plethora of brands like Ring, Nest, MyQ, TP-Link Casa, Unify Protect and a lot more. It also allows native control in the Apple Home app and use Siri to control these devices just like a HomeKit certified product would do. The user interface is simple, clean and manageable. You can also view and control your HomeBridge accessories. And most importantly, HomeBridge allows you to run on existing or affordable computer hardware. So the next question would be, is HomeBridge affiliated with Apple? The short answer is no. However, a team of talented developers reverse engineered Apple's own open source HomeKit accessory protocol, in other words, called HAP, and you can access it right now via the GitHub page. The next question would be, can Apple pull the plug? The short answer is no as well, cause they need to make that code available to anyone who's interested in building a HomeKit certified product. And with HomeBridge, the count of Apple HomeKit users is huge. So Apple can also take an indirect credit for that, an easy win for all. Now, Homebridge supports many hardware platforms and you can install it all the way from a Raspberry Pi Zero, a Pi 3B Plus, a Pi 4, a Windows 10 or a Mac computer and also on existing network attached storage in other words called NAS that supports Docker. However, Homebridge must be turned on running all the time. And that's why the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or the Pi 4 is a popular choice. Low consumption of power, easily available, and you can also purchase pre-owned ones to make it an affordable implementation. Now, to install Homebridge, you definitely don't need to be a developer or even have any coding experience. With a Raspberry Pi, the installation is straightforward, easy, just by using the Raspberry Imager app. No more SSH or downloading an image or even using the Belena Edge app. All you need is a class 10 micro SD card. The capacity can vary between 16 to 64 GB. Insert it in a SD card adapter. Make sure the plastic tab on the left is in unlocked position, which is moving the plastic tab to the top. Pop the SD card adapter into your reader. Open Raspberry Pi Imager. Click on Choose OS. Click on other specific purpose OS. Click on home assistant and home automation. Click on Homebridge. Click on the official Homebridge Raspberry Pi image. Click on choose storage. Click on write and depending on your internet connection, it will write and verify the data. Once completed, eject the micro SD card adapter, remove the micro SD card, insert it into the Raspberry Pi, connect the network cable and then power the device. Now give it a couple of five minutes and then open your preferred web browser and go to http homebridge.local 
using port 8581 to access the user interface. Now in the description, I've also left links on how to install Homebridge on a Windows 10, a Mac, and even also using a Synology NAS that runs DSM-6 and Docker. Now with access to the user interface, your next step is to install plugins that tells Homebridge where your smart devices are residing. Now I have personally classified plugins into three levels of configuration and many thanks to the developers. You don't need any coding experience. Now level one plugins are easy. I call them the zero configuration plugins. Just install them, it scans your network, auto discovers smart devices and tells Homebridge how many of them are on your network. Some plugin examples are to expose automatically devices from Sonos, Magic Home, TP-Link Casa and Shelly. The next is level two plugins. It's easy, however, you will need to provide your username and password. The hard part is remembering your login credentials. So plugins like Ring, Nest, MyQ, EVLink and Tuya, just with your email credentials, all of your smart devices are exported to a home bridge. The last is level three plugins. These need specific information like IP address, tokens, or keys to enable and expose the devices to Homebridge. For some level three plugins, you may need to run some commands to extract codes. For most typical users, level one and two plugins will be needed to expose the devices to Homebridge. And as a best practice, always install and configure one plugin at a time. Check there are no errors and proceed with the next one. Now, once you've installed all of your plugins, adding Homebridge to Apple Home is a piece of cake. So go to the dashboard, open the home app, tap on the plus sign, tap on add accessory, scan the QR code, add it to a specific room and you'll be prompted to add the devices to their rooms. Once completed, you can now create your scenes and automation. Now I've also did a complete 30 minute video dedicated on plugin types and configurations. I've also left the link in the description and oh, by the way, for a fee, I do offer remote sessions to set up your entire Homebridge system. Don't feel shy to schedule a session today. So over the last two years, I'm an active Homebridge user. It just works flawlessly with no hiccups. And that's why I'll also give you in this video, five reasons to use Homebridge. Number one, multiple smart home ecosystem integration. Remember I told you earlier that Apple HomeKit is my primary ecosystem. Now there's no rule you can't have more than one. And through the Google Smart Home and Alexa plugin, you can expose all of your Homebridge accessories to these ecosystems with ease and control them there as well. Two, integrate your existing products into HomeKit. With Homebridge plugins, you can still use your Ring, Nest, Simply Safe systems and other brands as well. Three, Homebridge adds more functionality. Through plugins, you can add products that Apple doesn't even support officially plus connect with other devices and services such as Telegram, Plex, or Kodi. And through Homebridge and with some additional hardware, you can even enable it as a Zigbee hub. In short, always allowing you to expand your smart home capabilities. Four, access to white label products. With Homebridge and its plugins, you can get access to affordable white label and other branded products, thus offering you options before making a purchase decision. Five, Homebridge keeps you frugal. With all those options available, you can keep your smart device purchases and smart home expenditures within budget and definitely pocket friendly. But hang on, there's so much talk about Matter and its imminent release coming this year. What happens to Homebridge? Um, should you be worried? My straight honest answer, a big no. I'll tell you. Matter is a promise of a reliable and secure connectivity. It's not yet a fact. It's an expectation that can be or cannot be met. And if fiction turns to fact, then this new industry standard will only be applied to certain specific release devices. Not every device will meet the standard. These companies at the end of the day need to make money with matter supported devices. So don't let this matter, chit chat, standard or online related content ruin your plans to build your smart home. Homebridge will still be required to support your current devices and the ones you intend to purchase in the near future. And just like that, that's how you can get started easily in 2022 with Homebridge. You can also check out this video here 
to know my five home bridge mistakes to avoid and helpful tips to improve them. And here there's a list of all my home bridge plugin tutorials that can get you going with your smart home build. And that's a wrap up. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And if there's anything I can help you with, don't feel shy to leave a comment down below to keep the conversation going. And if you need to schedule a remote session, I'm available as per your needs. So until the next time, stay safe, have a nice day. Cheers and happy automation.